we're going to study the law. The basic law and establishment of God's government in the nation of Israel. And in this chapter, the 21st chapter, is a lot of very, uh, very important things about today and yesterday and what happened back then. I, uh, <clears throat> all of you know who Bernie Sanders is, I guess, don't you? He's a Jewish uh, communist, basically. Socialist, they call him, but it's more than socialism, it's communism. Bernie Sanders uh, has never been successful in doing anything when it comes to manual labor at all. He went to Israel and he lived in a kibbutz for three or four years, I believe, if I remember right. And he said that uh, manual labor is for idiots. He tried to be a carpenter, tried to be different things, and he never was very good at anything. He said manual labor was for idiots, so that can show you what he thinks about the average American citizen. Manual labor is for idiots. Well, much of the idea that Bernie Sanders has and the nation of Israel, the nation of Israel today is a socialist, somewhat communist nation. Now, as we look at this, we're going to see some of this coming out in here. God didn't want, want his nation to be like all the other nations. It was different. The American experiment is something that never happened ever in history before. In any time. If you look at socialism and communism in the world, we find out that the, the upper class, the ruling class, or the only ones that really have anything, and uh, they'll give you a big speech that, uh, you know, they don't believe that anybody ought to be rich, that anybody ought to be uh, allowed to gain capitally and be, be above everybody else, but they want to be, and they are. Now let's go back here and see how Bernie Sanders and some of these people, uh, the communists, uh, uh, said, well, the Bible is communism. Well, let's look at it and see what it does say, okay? When Russia was uh, coming up into communism and the, the German, this is before World War I now, between World War I and World War II, uh, Russia was going communist. The Jews agreed with that all together there. They were happy with it. Uh, many of them were bankers and different things. They, uh, they had hawk shops, whatever. In Germany, uh, they, they, Hitler was a capitalist, totalitarian society. And I might tell you this also, while I'm at it, the Bush family was involved with Hitler financially all the time, and even after the, uh, his machinery, his, his uh, giant manufacturing uh, giants over there, and relocated them in South America and some even into America. The idea of the, um, the super race, Hitler said did not come from him, but from the Bush family, from the Bush family, Prescott Bush. Planned Parenthood came from that also. This all, we can see it coming into our modern, what happened and why we are where we are, what's going on. The Bush family proposed to be Republicans, but they were not. The force, the first in America, the first uh, mandated medical insurance was by George Jr. Bush. Set the, opened the door for Obama and on all of this. You see in history, you see these waves of what people call the Enlightenment, whatever. Let's go back and see what God says about all of this. Now, these are the ordinances which you are set before you, before them now. 
This is the nation of Israel. Now, this is the way God's government in this nation are going to be run now. If you buy a Hebrew slave, you shall he shall serve you for six years, but on the seventh year he shall go out as a free man without payment. This is, there are no, there, a Hebrew might get in such bad condition that he has to sell himself for the laborly, or somebody sells him to him, his family sells him to the family, and the, slavery or whatever, indenturedment, but he could never be held as a slave for over six years. He could go about out in society again and start over. They had allotments of land. The allotments of land were supposed to get, be given back. And this was to keep people from becoming too powerful in this nation. If he comes alone, he shall go out alone. If he comes with a husband or wife, then his wife shall go out with him. Okay? You can't hold these people or slaves more than that. In American government, we had two people that were slaves in America. Presidents Benjamin. of America. Benjamin Franklin, which escaped slavery and ran off. And uh, Andrew Johnson also was an indentured servant or a slave. By the way, Andrew Johnson never went to school one day in his life. His wife taught him how to read and write and arithmetic. We had indenturement in America for many years. And even after the Civil War, many people in the North were indentured to the company store, so to speak, as Tennessee Ernie Ford said. Verse number four, if his master gives him a wife and she bears him sons or daughters and the wife or her children shall belong to her master and she shall go out alone. That doesn't sound right, does it? But God is watching over the master and he's watching over the people also. But can you imagine you're losing your children? Because the children were born to these people while they were slaves. But if the slave plainly says, I love my master and my wife and my children, I will not go out as a free man. He wants to stay there and serve. His life is good. Everything, he's, he's having what he needs. He has enough freedom to have a wife and children. That's, that's some freedom, isn't it? Then his master shall bring him to God. Now, to the representatives of God. Then he shall bring him to the door of the doorpost. And his master shall pierce his ear with an awl. He's going to take to the doorpost now, and they're going to hold his ear out there, and they're going to put a hole in it. There's a lot of piercing going on today, but not like this. With an awl, and he shall serve him permanently. Because he wants to. <coughs> And if a man sells his daughter as a female slave, she shall not go free as the male slaves do. Boy, this is what this is not good, is it, girls? Yeah, not not good, not good. If she is displeasing in the eyes of her master, who who designated her for himself, then he shall let her be redeemed. Her family can buy her back if she's displeasing to him. If he didn't like the way, well, probably he's sleeping with her, you know, this is his concubine. <clears throat> he does not have authority to sell her to a foreign people because of his unfairness to her. And if he designates her for his son, he shall deal with her according to the custom of daughters. He's going to treat her like a real person. If his son falls in love with her, he's going to treat her like a a human being. <clears throat> if he takes to himself another woman, now you have to realize now <clears throat> that these Jewish people, many of the men had more than one wife. Okay? They had multiple wives but they <clears throat> were not to mistreat their wives. And, and this is talks about, this is the common custom among these people right then, okay? This is all the way back in the time of Moses. 
He takes himself another woman. He shall not reduce her food, her clothing, or her marriage rights. In other words, she will still be able to sleep with her husband. He's, he may like this other one a lot better, but he's not going to cut this wife off. He's going to show her affection. <clears throat> Women need affection too, not just a man, God says. Women need affection. <clears throat> now he shall not take her food away from her, nor her clothing, or her, or her marriage rights. Now, let's go back to the New Testament now. Now, this was still going on in the New Testament. These Pharisees were pretty rich people. And some of the Levites were very rich people. Anybody had anything to do with religion made a lot of money. It was kind of like the, uh, the big television preachers today and in the past. Oral Roberts, uh, A. Allen, etc., Benny Hinn. They made a lot of money. And they had several wives. Well, what they would do, and Jesus denounced them for this, is they would divorce their wife because they were dissatisfied with her, dump her out there in the world, take her children away from her, and leave her to starve. The law of Moses made laws for that here in Moses' time. And it was still valid in Jesus' time. But they were making exceptions and loopholes to the laws. And if you will not do these things to her, uh, for her, then she shall go out for nothing without payment of money. She's going to leave. If she wants to leave, she can leave. He who strikes a man so that he dies shall surely be put to death. You take your man and you strike a man and he dies. How would they strike a man? With a rod? With your fist, maybe? Most of the time they didn't strike you with your fist, they struck you with some type of an object, a club or something. And you die, you will be put to death. And however you did, whatever you did to him, that's what's going to happen to you. But if he did not lie and wait for him, now this is premeditated murder, okay? But God will let him fall into his hand, and then I will appoint for you a place to which he may flee. If it's not premeditated murder, you can go to a city of refuge. I remember so many years ago when my when my stepdad, Dale, was on television. He had escaped from Marion, Illinois prison, etc. And, and uh, he had been put in prison on false charges and he wanted to get out and uh, get a lawyer, get some, some presents over there. And he did. But he got a lot of people involved. Yeah, they, charged off, they dropped all the charges, basically, that were against him to put him in prison because he was framed. But a lot of people helped him, and they went down. I will place you, I will appoint a place for you to flee. And he got up there, and they were interviewing him on television, and he said, prisons are not for humans, for not men, for mankind. And they said, what are you going to do with these bad people? And he said, well, some people need to be controlled somehow. He said, some people cannot be put out into society at all. And then he clicked, because I've been teaching him the Bible. He clicked, he said, you know what, there need to be, needs to be colonies someplace where these prisoners can go with their families, so their families won't be broke up and everything else. He thought about the city as a refuge. He clicked, the light went on. If, however, a man acts presumptively toward his neighbor, so as to kill him craftily in deceit and crafting, and I've had a few uh, contracts out on me and it was premeditated murder people. You are to take him even from his altar that he may die. If he goes and flees to the altar and grabs hold of the horns of the altar, kill him anyway. This man's a murderer. And he who strikes his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. <clears throat> And 
he who kidnaps a man, whether he sells him or is found in his possession, he shall surely be put to death. Kidnapping is a capital crime. Murder is a capital crime. How do you deter people from killing people? You kill them. That's simple as that. That's what God said. That's not what I say. It's what God says. If you want to deter people from murder, you, you have to kill them. There has to be capital crimes. You have to take the people and execute them. The Bible says whatever you did, do it to them. And now, today, it's all the way that they're going to execute these criminals is inhumane. What if they just killed a person? What if they just executed him the way he executed the people? In the history, some of them have killed people and ate them. I don't wouldn't want to be part of killing somebody and eating them at all. Jeffrey Dahmer did that, you know. And more people than that. That's his, son, that's his one. And he who kidnaps a man, whether he sells him or is found in his possession, shall surely pay up to death. Well, didn't we have, haven't we had kidnappings? The, what's going on up here when the, the border is wide open and people are coming here, the cartels are coming up here, and they're kidnapping people up here and taking them down there and putting them in brothels and, and uh, they kill them. You know, there are TV programs and movies out there where you see things like this. The violence of it. The violence of kidnapping. One of the great kidnappings in the history of America was Charles Lindbergh's child was taken and then he was killed. These people were executed. That does deter crime, people. Execution does deter crime. If you want the foundation of a government, a government has to have the ability to bear the sword. In the New Testament, in several places, it says, in Romans 13, the one, it says, does the government bear the sword for no reason? Do you have capital punishment just, for, just to be doing it? Stalin did. There are many people that kill just because they want to. Stalin completely wiped out his whole army. At one time he killed all the generals. Hitler, that long night when he killed his people, when he killed his generals. The death penalty is an absolute necessity for them and foundation of human government. He who curses his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. That's pretty strong, isn't it? Now we come to PL and PD. What's PL and D? Property liability and property damage. This is where it all begins. And if men quarrel and one strikes the other with a stone or with his fist and he does not die but remains in bed, now he is disabled. You get in a fight with somebody and disable them. Now, a lot of these people go out in bars and get in fights. They just want to get out. They suddenly punch people. They do all kinds of crazy things in bars. If you hurt a man to where he can't go to work, guess what? You're going to pay him. If they did this today, you wouldn't have all these bar fights and people wanting to hurt each other, stab and cut each other, and beat each other up bite each other's ears off. <coughs> Guess what's going to happen? God says, now, I know people do these things, so we're going to stop this before it begins. But he remains in bed. If he gets up and walks around outside with his crutch or his staff, then he who struck him shall go unpunished. If he shall only pay for his loss of time at work, this is, this is what you call loss of time. And he shall take care of him until he is completely healed. You're going to pay his wages until he's completely healed. Would this stop a lot of this crime? If they took these gangsters and did this, we wouldn't have any more gangsters. Take care of it. God knows what he's doing, people. 
And if a man strikes his male or female slave with a rod and he dies at his hand, he shall be punished. He shall suffer vengeance. Hamas is the word in the Hebrew. He shall suffer vengeance. If, however, he survives a day or two, no vengeance shall be taken for him, and he is his property. Well, we, <clears throat> this is a different time, isn't it? A man did not own himself. A woman did not own herself back then. Isn't it wonderful? Isn't the American experiment wonderful? Girls, isn't the American experiment wonderful today? And if men struggle with each other and strike a woman with child so that she has a miscarriage, yet there is no further injury, she shall surely be fined as a woman's husband may demand on him, and he shall pay as the judges decide. That doesn't sound fair either, does it? But this was a wholly different time. If, if the little child dies, and the woman doesn't die, if the woman dies with the child, it's murder for people. But if there are any further injury, then you shall appoint as a penalty of life for life. You sh he shall die. Eye for an eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for a foot. Burn for burn, wound for wound, bruise for bruise. This would stop a lot of crime, wouldn't it? This would stop a lot of crime. Remember now, we live in a time of slavery here. But here in America, we don't. By the time Jesus came upon, came upon the scene, and, and, and we have Paul, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we have the apostles, we have, we have the writings of the New Testament, guess what? If a man owned a slave, you look to him not as a slave, but as your brother and co-heir in Christ. Remember from when the, the letter of Philemon, when Onesimus took off and ran away, and Paul came and talked to him, and he was a runaway slave, and, and he told him, go back home. Then he wrote a letter to his daddy, to his owner. He said, you owe me your life, and I expect you, whatever loss you have, you put it on my account. And remember me, you owe me your life. You treat this man as your brother, not as a runaway slave. You don't beat him. He's your brother now. He's... He's, he's your servant, all right, but he's your brother. Things changed. If a man strikes the eye of his male or female slave and destroys it, he shall let him go free on account of his eye. You know, back in the army, being out on the front lines was awfully scary, dangerous thing. And people, men, would take and shoot their foot, shoot themselves in the foot or shoot themselves in the leg. So they wouldn't have, they would be go back and behind line, maybe they would go home, get away from this. And bullets flying every place, who knew what bullet did what? They did that. You ever hear from Bonnie and Clyde? Sometimes prisons were so bad and the working conditions in prisons were so bad that men would maim themselves so they wouldn't have to go to work. They were being beat and chained out there. Clyde Barrow took and chopped off some of his toes so he wouldn't have to go out on the chain gang. And one long after that he escaped. <laughs> If a man knocks a tooth out of his male or female slave, he shall let him go free on account of the tooth. Teeth are very important. Teeth are your life. Mm -hmm. How many people have died because of bad teeth in the history? I remember when I was a young boy. Now, this is a long time ago. This is in the last century. In the first part of the last century, my grandmother and my grandfather pulled all their teeth out. Mm -hmm. And they got false teeth. Because many people died with infections. 
and it caused pericardial infection in her heart, and they died. I don't know. I think your grandmother and grandfather pulled all their teeth out, didn't they, Marilyn? My great grandmother pulled all her teeth out. Many of them pulled all her teeth out. Teeth were a problem. And they just gummed their way through life before they had false teeth. My step grandfather, Amadeo Lamucci, was an Italian. And he, uh, he pulled all his teeth out. And he went down and got him some false teeth, but he didn't like them at all. He never wore them. His jaws were kind of short after that. His gums went together. But his teeth were so tough he could bite a matchstick in two. He could eat a steak without, with just his gums. <laughs> so teeth are very important here. You don't knock a man's teeth out. You knock somebody's teeth out and you're going to be in trouble. If he's your slave, you're going to turn him free. You've lost all your money investment. <laughs> it's going to cost you something. If an ox gores a man or a woman to death, the ox shall surely be stoned and its flesh shall not be eaten. It could have rabies. But the owner of the ox shall go unpunished. If, however, an ox previously had the habit of goring and its owner has been warned, yet he does not confine it, it kills a man or woman, the ox shall be stoned and its owner also shall be put to death. You endangered other people. In California, down there on the farm, we could have cats, and that was a, a tax write-off because cats are very important on the farm. You either have cats or rats. One of the other, you have a choice, cats or rats. But a dog, if you brought a dog on your property, if it was a bulldog or Wattweiler or a German Shepherd or something, some dog that was very powerful, you couldn't have insurance on it. It was intentionally a powerful animal. Now, we had a Rottweiler there that, that was the sweetest, kindest thing. If you hollered at him, he'd just fall on the ground and wet on himself. He was big, weighed probably 200 pounds, but he was just a big baby. I have a, a little dog down there that was half Rottweiler and half Corgi. That's a real, quite a mixture. But he was short, had little short legs, and then he had an affair with my daughter's dog, which was a boxer, and now Spanky died. I called him Spanky. He was the sweetest little dog you ever saw, that little Rottweiler and Corgi. Looked like a Rottweiler with his legs chopped off. Now, Spanky Jr., he's got a short tail, and his little ears stand up like a, like a little Corgi, but he's half boxer, a quarter Corgi, and a quarter Rottweiler. He's got that Rottweiler color and everything and everything, but he's sweet and kind and runs like a bullet. Just zoom, zoom, zoom like the corgis do. They're, they're shepherds, you know. Mm -hmm. I can have them because they're a little bit short guys. <laughs> but sometimes if you go into a person's yard with a little chihuahua or something, they will be biting your ankles. Because they are vicious little guys. But if you had an ox, now, another thing, according to the law of Moses, you could not neuter your bulls. You could not castrate a bull. God gave it the ability to procreate life. You couldn't stop that. Now, very few bulls live today. They usually castrate them and they make steers out of them. And they were for eating. They had no natural instincts to breed or whatever. They call them a bull and steer sometimes when they think they're still a bull. But that was illegal. It's illegal to, and under the law, to castrate or neuter your dogs or your cats or your horses. Horses and bulls that are intact are very dangerous sometimes. I went to uh, <clears throat> Buffalo Bill Cody's ranch in uh, North Platte, Nebraska. And I went into his horse barn. He had all stallions, by the way. He didn't have gildings, he had stallions. Stallions are more powerful 
and they have more stamina than a gilding. As a gilding is a lot more docile. But he had great big stalls with these stallions, very like 10 foot tall walls. All these stallions are here. You have to keep them apart from each other. They are a dangerous animal. I have an ear that's cut in two. I have a basal fracture. I have a broken neck. I have teeth prints all over me from a stallion that tried to kill me. Very seldom we ever broke stallions up here in this country when we were hunting wild horses. We got the mares and the young colts. We didn't want to tangle with the stallion. They're very powerful. The stallions, the bulls, all of these things are potentially dangerous. You protect your neighbor from them. I had a clan out on the farm down there and uh, he had a stallion. And I told him, I said, you have to have an eight foot fence around that stallion. I said, our insurance is no good if that rascal gets out and hurts somebody. You have to, they still get that landowner. All of this whole, all of these laws come from this very, this very chapter in the Bible. You have to protect your neighbors from an animal. If you don't, you're liable, even for the death penalty, if they're killed. If you have an ox that has hurt other people and gored other people and kills a man, then you will die. The ox will be stoned to death. You don't eat him, but you will die along with the ox. If a ransom is demanded for him, that he shall give for him the redemption of his life, whatever is demanded of him. Now, if you say, well, you can live only if you pay this much money to this man's family. You will have no negotiation over this. You give them what they ask. You give them what they ask. Whether it go goers, a son or a daughter, it shall be done to him according to the same rule. A boy or a girl, neither one, doesn't matter now. Girls are on the same level as boys. Isn't that wonderful? If the ox gores a male or female slave, the owner shall give his or her master 30 shekels of silver, and the ox shall be stoned. In other words, he shall pay for it. How much was Jesus betrayed for? 30 pieces of silver, the price of a slave. If a man opens a pit or digs a pit and does not cover it over and an ox or a donkey falls into it. Now, this is your property. And some animal gets on your property, you are still liable if there's a dangerous situation there. The owner of the pit shall make restitution and he shall give money to its owner and then that animal shall be his. In other words, if the ox dies in there or if he gets crippled or whatever, you'll kill him and you eat him. You can eat. And if one man's ox hurts another so that he dies, then they shall sell the live ox and divide its price equally. Also, they shall divide the dead ox. This is what God said. If your animal kills another animal, you're going to sell that animal and you're going to give half of it, half the money to the person that that animal injured his animal. You know, sometimes in history, people have turned bad bulls, bad horses, and somebody else's pens to do this. I know times that people had gardens, and they took and turned their animals loose into a person's garden to meanness, and they ate their all, all their garden up, their vegetables up. You're going to pay for it all. All of it's here. Any of this mischief is coming back home. If we had a reliable conscientious, legitimate government. This will happen. Or if it's known that the ox was privileged in the habit of goring, yet its owner has not confined it, he shall surely pay for ox for ox, and the day the animal shall become his. If this was something that was done, you, you've got to protect your neighbors, you've got to protect people. A year ago in October, I had a company come out here and put an AC in my house. 
and I left the propane line loose basically for 40 hours. I lost my hearing. I lost some of my eyesight. I go partially blind sometimes. Under, if I'd have died, the people would have been put to death according to this. I came real close to it. They said, when you have so much ocular reprobation that you lose your hearing, that means you're almost dead. My feet were, my legs were so, the muscles in them were so tight that I could not, I walked on tiptoes, I couldn't put my heels down because I had doctrine and deprivation and I was almost dead. Forty hours, two nights I was in bed and this happened. I lost my hearing the first night, the next night I was up all night wandering around all over the place, didn't even know what I was doing. Sick. We have laws that uh, a man came out to my house one time and delivered a, uh, a refrigerator. I went out there with him and I was having trouble getting around a little bit. I was using my cane at that time. My back was giving me a lot of trouble. I went out there and I said, I said make sure, because he had already delivered the refrigerator to the wrong place that day. He was real late and had a date with a beautiful girl. And he was in a hurry. And he went out there and I said, he lifted up and I said, okay, and then I started walking off. He flipped that 50 or 75 pound box in the air and it fell right on my head. He, I needed a neck operation over that. And I haven't had neck trouble ever since. They fined him $95,000 for that act. And they asked him, what did you do this? Well, I don't know. I just flipped up there and it fell and hit him in the head and knocked him down. And I was in a hurry to go see my girlfriend. He didn't take it in the house. I was suffering all that time. It really hurt me for, well, it, to this day, it hurt me. Compensation. Compensation. People get out, hurt out on the oil field, they get killed. If you go get killed in the Army uh, and you have a, uh, a life insurance policy, you get, you get paid for that. And I think the government paid for some, some of that now. I don't know what they do anymore or not. In World War II and Vietnam and whatever, there was stipulations about that. So the family will be compensated. Wouldn't it be nice if people just didn't start wars for personal interests like happened in the Dark Ages? And all the people out there that died? There was, how many battlefields, even here in this valley, how many people died because of somebody else's greed? How about if they were all held accountable? all held accountable. Our Father, we thank you for this message from your word that will help people out there to understand there needs to be rules in society. We, we can't have a reckless, wild, defunded police, defunded laws, turning criminals out on the streets, that those that commit capital crimes need to be punished with capital punishment. People that go and hurt other people need to pay for it. They have to work the rest of their life. It's a great deterrent to crime here, and you know that. You put it in your word 3,000 years ago. Father, thank you for it. Please forgive me where I failed you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.